Welcome to 8 Easy Steps for Year in Prep. I have so many clients and trainings I've done. I find that these 8 Easy Steps will help you be successful in closing your end of year and feeling confident with your numbers. First thing we want to go over is completing your bank reconciliations. You will select from the gear, Reconcile. For each account that you have, you will be reconciling through the end of year, which is 12-31-2017. The main things when you get ready to reconcile your December is you want to review any of these older items that are sitting in your account. You want to verify if they are valid and haven't cashed or we have not deposited. So once you do that, then you can feel confident that these items that are open are really open. If not, you need to go in there and delete the bill and the payment in order to make your bank balance accurate and your financials. Once you've reconciled that, don't forget about your credit cards. Each of your credit cards have a reconciliation screen as well, and that also backs up your end of year with your credit card statements. Once your accounts are reconciled, we want to go over and actually run some accounts payable and accounts receivable reports. So I go over to the left and select reports, all reports, and in here you've got manage accounts receivable and manage accounts payable. This is where I will find my agings. So the first one we want to look at is manage accounts receivable. In here, I'm going to select just an accounts receivable summary. This is a summary of what clients or customers owe me. I want to verify that there is nothing in my 91 or over date uh, column as these items could be bad debt and I would need to write them off in this year. If everything else looks good, you can go ahead and print this report. I usually save it on a file on my desktop for end of year. In the same instance, we're going to go over and all reports, manage accounts payable. I want to verify anything in my accounts payable I would owe is valid. And in accounts payable, I'm just going to run an AP aging summary. This will give me anything open. In here, I'm verifying the same things. Is there anything in my 91 or over column? If everything looks correct, I will go ahead and run this report and put it in my end of year file. Next up, while we're in accounts payable, we want to go ahead and verify if there's any 1099 contractors that we haven't paid yet because we want to verify anything that's open or not paid as we are going to give them a 1099 on the money that we did pay them. In here we only have one and it says that there is an open bill so we have the option to pay it before end of year and that will be included on his 1099 or we will have an open balance moving forward. In each vendor that you want to do a 1099 on you want to make sure you have it checked as a trackable payment for 1099s and their business ID that could be a federal ID or a social security if they're a sole proprietor. And here is a list of how to prepare your 1099s in QuickBooks along with where you would go and also how to set up your e-file for your 1099s. We're going to go over to workers on the left hand side and in the file tab contractors. I only have one set up in here. You'll see the name. It also gives me an option to write their check again um, if there is any open bills 
and then get ready to prepare my 1099. In here, we'll go ahead and just select Let's Get Started. It will go through a one through four process. I'm reviewing the data before you print. So we want to verify main thing is the tax ID is correct and your name and address. Step two, we're going to verify on that vendor where we actually paid him and where we want it to show up on the 1099. So we've got selected here box seven for non-employee compensation. And that is most of your vendors, unless you're doing interest, of course, then we would select another box. But right now we just run, a, run our non-employee compensation. In this case, I know that I had put uh, most of Bronham's um, payments under insurance. And that would be the same if you're doing subcontractors, you would select the subcontractor expense. Once I've verified the non-employee compensation account, I want to go over to the contractor's name and tax ID. Make sure all that information is correct. If not, I will edit it here. And then we'll hit next. Now it's verifying the amount that's going to go into box seven and the total payment for this vendor. I will now hit finish preparing my 1099s. Here is where I have the option to get ready to e-file it or I can print and mail the forms myself. Most of the times I go to Office Depot, Office Max, I can go buy my 1099 forms and then have them handed out uh, before January 31st. This will give me a print sample so I can align my printer. I haven't had to do this to be honest with you, um, but you might as well in good practice go ahead and view and print a sample. Once that does align with your form, you will hit yes, this looks good. And that's the easy way to do 1099s. Now we want to go ahead and record any cash tags and depreciation. So we'll go to our plus sign and select a journal entry. A journal entry for my cash tags is going to be dated end of year. I'll put in the journal number cash tags to make it simple to look for if needed. And then I'll select all the accounts and the totals of the cash tags. If I want, I can put a description over to the right. My offset is going to be the owner's draw. If this is a sole proprietor, most of the time this account is set up. If this is a corporation, you will just reimburse the president for these expenses in a check. Then we have depreciation. This can be found off your tax return from 2016, or you can call your CPA, or you can look at what you did last year. If you didn't add any vehicles or fixed assets, it would be the same amount. And you will record that for depreciation for 2017. Now we want to run our inventory reports. So we'll go over to reports and select Manage Product and in Inventory. This is where we're going to run a physical and evaluation inventory report. On the inventory valuation report, we want to select Physical Inventory Worksheet first. This worksheet shows the product and the quantity on hand. I usually hand this off uh, to my warehouse person and I would have them go verify that I had 25 pumps on hand. If not, I would adjust my inventory. The inventory also has a valuation summary on it so I can see what the asset value is of the inventory I'm holding. And now we'll go over to reports 
and business overview as we have completed the main task in order to produce our financials. The main reports I run are the profit and loss and the balance sheet. If I'm doing end of year, I also might run the profit and loss detail to look at the detail that is populating all my income and expense lines. But let's start off with our profit and loss. Profit and loss we run for a period of time, so make sure you select that January through December. You can verify your income items along with all your expenses and costs of goods for a net income. Looks like we're not going to owe a lot this year. And then we have the balance sheet. The balance sheet again is your assets and liabilities. And so we verified that the cash is good because we've done all the reconciliations and that the accounts receivable is correct, the inventory, and if we did purchase any new trucks, we would want to report those, but they should be the same as last year if there is no change. We also reviewed the accounts payable, and the MasterCard has been reconciled. These would also be payables you would want to confirm if you had any loans or sales tax out there. And the other report I like to run is at a toggle at the top here where you can select comparing other periods. In this case, I might want to compare my prior year profit and loss to see where I increased or decreased in income or expenses. And here is a list of the reports I run. So I go over the profit and loss, the balance sheet, accounts payable, accounts receivable, the inventory, and then of course all your payroll reports. And you can provide your, your CPA or if you're doing TurboTax with any new equipment or vehicles. And then you want to run a comparison of your profit and loss and balance sheet. And last but not least is how to protect all that data once you've done all that hard work for the year. We're going to go over to the gear and select account and settings. Here in the advanced tab to the left it will give me an option to close my books. So I'll select the pencil here and here is where I can select close the books with a closing date. I can also select if I want it to just make me aware every time I try and put information in from that time period back or I can put a password on it so that no one can change it. Once I've done that I'll select save. And there you have completed end of year prep and I hope that brings 2017 to a close and we will look for success in 2018. Thanks again for watching. If you need any extra help please email or call. Happy New Year.